Okay. Just lost air conditioning, which is a good thing, probably. <laughs> so, um, so we're, at the moment we're growing on an incremental basis. Uh, a lot of our work is actually on dealing with the stakeholder groups, the other departments, the agencies. We're organising to do a roadshow around RDAs. They have been alerted through our normal channels, but I, you know, I have my concerns over whether that actually reaches everyone at a deep enough level, and we are going to be running around showing them how it works. I'm sorry, I'm fantastic with you, Adora, and um, I think that's a site that has fantastic potential. Um, I'm a little bit disturbed by the fact that it's described as a, a whole of government approach, and I don't know if anyone in local government in any of the associations or the Centre for Excellence in Local Government that I work in who know anything about it. And in fact, I was at a function last night where the Minister spoke for nearly an hour and mentioned it at all. So I wonder how engaged local government's been in the development process and, and to what extent their needs have been incorporated into the project. Not much at all. In fact, now you're aware, so that's the same point. That is good stuff. Um, but the RDAs aren't a level of government. I think that's a really important yes, thing to not. Make. They're not. They're not. They're not. Where we've started is with RDAs because they're the groups that we directly deal with. Um, local governments are still a challenge for our department because we're still staffing up. We're not even a year old yet. And we're still working out, you know, what we want to be when we grow up in that regard as a department. So I think, you know, our engagement with local government at this point isn't as good as it should be and it is improving. Um, and we're working on that quite a bit. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't aware of the minister's speech. I've been out of circulation. No, I didn't week. mention but, that. But the yeah, said but I, I'll talk to our comms team about that and make sure it is included in all of those things and it doesn't get missed out. Um, but um, look, for local governments, I, I, I see it becoming a tool that basically allows them to do the things they can't afford to do, some of the things they want to do in engagement activities. And I know, you know, Bang the Table, Cloud Forge, and, and various other organisations are intermediate areas they can bring in at a reasonable cost, usually. Um, but there are challenges when you don't always have that kind of budget or when the conversations, you know, just aren't as rich as you want over time. They feel like short time stamps. So um, what, what we're starting to do at the moment is we're starting to talk to local government associations and we know they're not going to get to local governments involved either. And we do have uh, a, a couple of, you know, speaking things coming up at local government conferences, and we're going to be basically, it, a lot of it is pressing the palms, so we're going to be working through that. We obviously can't go and visit every local government, um, no, no, just because no. of the number. So trying to get the word out through you know, various channels, and we're aiming for the, the, the particularly web savvy ones to start with, because they're the ones who are more inclined to actually say, I see use in this and also the ones who are more likely to be able to give us advice back to say this is what you need to do or this is what you need to not do. Yeah, uh, we're actually also compiling some quite significant databases that mm -hmm. have been funded by the department. Yes, um, no, and, and, and So yeah, we should probably yeah. talk about uh, that. Definitely, that. definitely. So this is, this is how we're starting to build the relationships. As I said, we've released the bigger site. It's there for us to start those conversations mm -hmm. on. Um, and, um, you know, we, we're just trying to start the conversations now. Sure. I'm going to ask a more technical question because mm -hmm. I see a great, a great way for this forward, you know, particularly if we're trying to find my local hospital or a local agency or whatever, I'm doing something. Um, you, this is a, an interface for a normal PC or a laptop type, type of user that I see. How, how, how soon before we see a true mobile thing where it just automatically yeah. knows where I am? Or, is, can use my location service to find me and then I can just have to push a button because that's where we're heading now. It's yeah. like having to type information in where I am or select where yeah. I am. It's, you know where I am and tell me all the things around me. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a couple of chicken and egg things going on there. I don't know why this keeps coming in and out. The first thing is uh, we need to have enough data in there to make it useful for people for it to be mobile. So we're working on the data conversations with agencies now. Uh, it's not necessarily simple um, to get data sets from lots of different agencies and put them into a single interface. There's a lot of thinking that has to go into that. Some of the data sets aren't geospatially mapped. Some of them you know, have different levels of accuracy or, or completeness. 
Um, also, there's various stakeholders and ministers and senior executives who need to be satisfied that you know that people won't be able to look at it and suddenly draw the wrong conclusion, whatever the wrong conclusion happens to be. Um, which, of course, people, as we say, we're using public data. All of this is out there anyway, so if people want to draw their own conclusions, they can already do that. So we're not, you know, doing anything uh, unusual. Um, the whole website um, is built on Drupal, so that makes it very easy for us to uh, basically extrude it out in mobile fashion. Um, so we're not, we, you know, that's that's a fairly simple process for us. So um, and we do really see strongly for mobile, particularly on smartphone platforms in remote areas of Australia. We're going to go that direction. But particularly, we want to have a good look at how we actually make the conversations uh, effective on mobile platforms. Because even more in for, in, um, important to us than just having the data available to people is actually to let them have a voice in the conversations. Because we actually do want to hear from these people. We do want their voices in there. And that's been a very hard thing to get um, without actually sending out people on the ground or going to specialist you know, agencies who go out there and do it for you, and hopefully they're not presenting their own biases. Um, yeah, but it is, it, yeah, we have time, um, but it is something that's definitely, you know, on the way back. Well, we're not replacing the other um, sort of groups. Um, and this is something where you know there, there isn't a top level strategy at this point in government over these sites, and I think that will evolve over time. Um, data work up to use a catalogue, so they point you to the data sets. Some of them they may or may not store. We're the presentation level for those data sets through my regions, and all those other specific ones serve a lot of agency functions in terms of meeting their communication information needs. What we do, for example, with hospitals is we provide the top level information, the name, address, that sort of thing, and then we push people through to my hospitals for the deep down level in terms of you know number of emergency room, you know, emissions each year, those sort of things. So those websites will be the, the really deep data sites. If you really want to go really, really deep into how many preschool students there are in a particular year and a particular grade or something like that. And we'll be providing more the, the, the picture of your region in a, in a sort of holistic way. Um, how that integration goes in the future, who knows? Because really, it, it's data is data. If people decide to drill into it in one place rather than another, then who are we to say no? But we've got all the agency silos and relationships and things that sort of don't quite work in that regard. Craig, okay. you've got um, project we are looking towards it because yeah. the agency also looks after grants. Right. So I'm currently working to try and get up to actually integrate grants into it, yeah. but not just in terms of finding grants, but also in terms of reporting back on what's happening. But that's going to take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. We had to get the website actually built and okay. launched before yeah. we could do a lot of this stuff. Because people have to actually see something and be able to play with something, and you can play with it. You just go to myregion.gov.au, it's there. Um, and it, that people have to play with it before they can actually start to conceptualise what it could be. You could um, be out launching for years if you wait. Exactly. Wait and exactly. And we're trying to follow a, a, a launch fast you know, and build approach. Because I think that ultimately will end up in a better solution and it will end up better over time. But initially, you end up a bit sparser, so to speak. Any comments, questions, ideas? What should we have? Yes. I was just going to ask you how do you, how do you think this fits with other services, such as ones coming out of uh, a GMO, GovDex, GovSpace, and um, mm -hmm. where do you think this sort of meets a different a different need? Yeah, I think um, like. GovDex is very good for closed groups within government and for them to have discussions. It doesn't have a great forum functionality at this point in time. And, it, and its strength is more sharing documents rather than having conversations. Um, GovSpace is brilliant for the blogs and for the fast websites that you need up very quickly. Um, but again, it's, 
you can use it for consultation, but again, it's uh, each one is a discrete entity, and it's and it happens, it's done, and then the information all disappears into the bowels of an agency, and never gets seen again. Uh, what we're trying to do with my region is basically it's it has an ongoing funding. It's designed to be an ongoing business intelligence tool for government. But that's the way I describe it to government people because they understand business intelligence. But what it means is they basically are able to, over a long period of time, build pictures on people's views and behaviours. And I think the issues that we have with the GovDex and GovSpaces and all the little pop-up consultation tools and you know even things like Future Melbourne and SA Plan, what those things will suffer from is that every moment of time they're gone and then when they're done again, the intelligence is not always translated seamlessly, so you're not getting a picture of how Australia is changing or how parts of Australia are changing. So we're trying to have something where we can actually track it over time. We're also building in things like you know various sorts of um, authenticity tools and things like that. So if someone you know regularly says things that, that other people think are rubbish, they're flagged as that by, uh, by the people concerned, by the community, and then we can actually start waiting opinions from discrete identities. We don't, we don't need to know their name, all we have to do is take an advice from the ones who answer. In this way we're starting to be able to say, okay, who should we be talking to? And that doesn't just mean academics or, you know, stakeholders, that also means the people in the community who are passionate about, who have spent a lot of time learning about it and have some very definitive views which are, you know, quite well formed. So that's sort of where we're going. Just a long-term picture. Yep. I mean, where is a lot of your data coming from? Because I know, like, from a personal experience uh, mm -hmm. at, at immigration, you know, we sit on mountains of data. It's not public. Yep. Um, it, you know, there's a question of whether it should be public. You know, is it FOI, all that sort of stuff? Yep. Um, and I know, you know, it's, it's very common for the ABS to have that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and their data is fantastic. Um, are you guys looking to get? We go right into the heart of, of federal government departments to, to get every single little thing you can? Uh, or is it more just a... Well, it's, it's not going to be in everything because there is some data that government holds that you know, can't be released for security or privacy reasons. You know, and, and there can be other reasons as well. And, you know, frankly, we got, as an agency, we can't go and say you know, who should release their data and to us and how we can then use it. Um, at the end of the day, what we're doing initially is we're picking up on public data, so the ABS is a really key supplier for us. They're also important because they get a lot of the state data, and the states actually have a lot more of the interesting data than Commonwealth does, frankly, because um, they actually have a lot more place-based data. Um, and it gets down to, you know, they get a lot of that from local government as well. So trying to pull all that together in itself is a massive undertaking. Um, where your data is not released publicly, well, we're not going to include it because you need to make the decision to release it publicly and then you will make a decision on including it. You know, it's not a, a kind of, you know, we, you make the decision first. Um, but, you know, but, you know, me personally in the way, you know, we'll run these things is we'll be advocating, you know, the open government line, the data.gov.au line and, you know, the FOI. If it's, if it's data that can be FOI, then why not release it before it gets FOI um, so that you can manage the process rather than have the process um, controlled by journalists. You know, because a lot of it, you know, is a lot of the data we actually hold, if we actually release it, there'd be very little interest in it anyway. But if we can actually build it up into something that's useful for people and where they live, like one of the things I would love to see is sort of micro settlements where people have settled across Australia and different communities have formed. And I can understand there can be sensitivities around that, saying, oh, you know, people will choose not to live in a certain place because they see that it's full of a particular group that they don't want to live with. Um, but the fact is that they can drive around the streets and probably pick that out themselves. So, you know, and in some senses, if those people did move into those areas, you'd probably end up with uh, potentially more issues anyway. Um, and don't people have the right to know Anyway, so that's sort of where you have to weigh it up. But very interested in that sort of information from you guys. Yeah, Craig, using a platform like this for consultation, I think, could be quite powerful, particularly for 
a lot of agencies find themselves in situations where they get asked to do some consultation on something and they don't 